Hi, welcome to week 14 of your fluency task cards. This week we are featuring the novel Al Capone Does My Shirts. Now I've taught this book before and honestly I'm not really a fan of historical fiction books. They're not my favorite books to read but this one blew my mind on how interesting the history behind this was. I'm going to go over the history briefly before I show you the task card just so you can understand um, and really kind of understand what you're getting into with this book. So we're, you're going to read your cards each day this week and turn in your summary to me anytime. Let's review what fluent readers do. Fluent readers read accurately, they read with expression, they read smooth and notice punctuation, and they comprehend what they read. Okay, so Al Capone, if you don't know who that is, he's a very famous criminal um, who had to serve time in Alcatraz. Now, if you don't know what Alcatraz is, which I had to kind of do some more research about it too, um, I just pulled up their website here and it is no longer in service, but Alcatraz was this very famous prison um, that was opened during the 1930s, which is when this book uh, is written and the time frame that it surrounds. So historically it is accurate. Now the people and maybe what happened in the book isn't. So that's what you need to remember about historical fiction. So this is what Alcatraz Island looks like. Um, it is open to the public, obviously not right now because of COVID-19, but it is kind of like a cool museum now that you can go visit in San Francisco. So that's a quick little tidbit. Um, another thing I really love about this book is it talks about our main character's sister. And since it takes place in the 1930s, we're assuming she has a sort of mental disability. Um, it's kind of implied that it could be something on the autism spectrum. And you can see the difference of how she's treated then versus how people with the same disability would be treated today. And you see that our main character loves her and cares about her. And the reason they have to move to Alcatraz is so that she can get into the special school because no other schools will take her because of her disability. So it's very interesting to see that um, part of history as well and see how far we've come and still the growth that we need to have um, to include everyone despite any disabilities or any impairments they may have. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Today, I moved to a 12 acre rock covered with cement topped with bird turds and surrounded by water. Alcatraz sits in the middle of the bay, so close to the city of San Francisco, I can hear them call the score on a baseball game on the Marina Green. Okay, not that close, but still. I'm not the only kid who lives here. There's my sister Natalie, except she doesn't count. And there are 23 other kids who live on the island because their dads work as guards or cooks, doctors or electricians for the prison, like my dad does. The convicts we have here are the kind other prisons don't want. I never knew prisons could be picky, but I guess they can. You get to Alcatraz by being the worst of the worst. Unless you're me. I came here because my mother said I had to. But apparently nobody cares, because now I'm Moose Flanagan, Alcatraz boy. Also, my sister can go to the Esther P. Marinoff School. I peek from the front window of our new apartment and look to see the little glass room lit bright in the dark night. This is the dock guard tower, a popcorn stand on stilts where somebody's dad sits with enough firepower to blow us all the smithereens. The keys to all the boats are kept up there for some reason. Besides the guard tower, there's water all around, black and shiny like tar. My dad is out there too. He has guard duty in another tower somewhere on the island. My dad's an electrician for Pete's sake. What's he doing playing prison guard? My mom is in her room unpacking and Natalie's sitting on the kitchen floor, running her hands through a button box. She seems to know more about these buttons than it seems possible to know. If I hide one behind my back, she can take a look at her box and name the exact button that I have. Nat, you okay? I sit down on the floor next to her. Moose and Natalie go on a train. Moose and Natalie eat meatloaf sandwich. 
Moose and Natalie look out the window. Yeah, we did all that. And now we're here with some swell fellows like Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly. Natalie Flanagan's whole family? Well, I wouldn't exactly say they are family. More like next door neighbors, I guess. Moose and Natalie go to school, she says. Yeah, but not the same school, remember? You're going to this nice place called Esther P. Marinoff. I try to sound sincere. Okay, so great reader summarize. Go ahead and use the summary template from the writing revolution. Give me a few words for who, what, when, where, why, and how. Once you have that outline, go ahead and give me a couple of complete summary sentences about what you read. Uh, go ahead and turn that in to me when you're finished. Thanks for investing in yourself, and you are well on your way to better fluency.